Hello. Um, today we are going to show and dem demonstrate how we are going to make um, XRF caps for soil and the dust samples. Um, and I will show you how to make these cups and I also show you how to shoot an XRF instrument. So the first thing I'll show you what's um, the components of an XRF cups. There are three components. We will need a ring which is look like this one. And then we will need a um, taller one which is the middle part. And we will also need a cap which looks like this. And we will also need a um, XRF thin film, which could be purchased from um, lab supplies. So what you need to do is actually find a clean place for the XRF to be placed on. And you get one thin film. It's okay to use fingers, but um, try to grab the edge of the thin film. Do not touch the central part and you put the thin film on the top of the ring and now you're trying to push down the middle part you just push down until you hear a click and then here's how it looks like and uh, um, make sure that the thin film is flat um, between the ring and the bot and the middle one. And if somehow the thin film is um, like distorted, just throw this part away and then make a new one. Now we will be ready to put soil inside such a cup. And here's a teaspoon and basically we only need one full teaspoon of soil all right so this is enough and gently shake it so the soil is packed. Now we put a second thin film on top of the soil. And there, as you can see, there are still some empty space in the cup and we are going to fill it with um, polyester fibers so put on the second film and then fill the rest of the space with with the fiber and the last step as you can see um, just put on the cap again until you hear a click So here's a completed XRF cup with soil samples inside and the last step, um, please check this surface, it, it should be a flat surface, um, if you can see that the soil sample inside there are still some empty space between soil particles, um, it is because there is not enough stepping put on the top. So. Um, please remake another one but if there are too much stuff being put inside the cup the surface will be like um, bulge towards outside which is also not perfect for measurements so make sure you put in um, just enough stuffing so that um, create a really impact soil packing and also a really flat thin film surface now we are going to make a second cup which contains dust samples um, collected from one of our researchers home, uh, Zhao's home. 
so the dust sample looks like this. The XRF components are basically the same, so we still need three parts. The ring, the, the middle one, and the cap. First we take one thin film, put on the ring, and then we push the middle part down. And we examine it, the thin film is quite flat, so it's a good one. The difficulty of making dust cups is that we cannot measure dust as we measured soil so uh, we generally have to pack dust really tightly into the cups and there, um, we generally will tightly pack the dust until it reached at least half of the total height of the XRF cups and there, therefore we make a mark of the We make a mark of the half height. And we just stuff dust samples in and really make sure that um, it's uh, pressing it down and make sure it's, it's packed really tightly. I cannot see my half height mark, so this much of that should be enough. And then we put on a second thin film. And again, fill the um, rest of the top space with stuffing. And on the cap, we should be able to um, label each sample. This sample is dust, so I'll just label it as dust sample. And if um, there are multiple soil or dust samples, um, it can be like labeled as dust number one, dust number two, etc. And uh, this is our soil samples. So soil and the dust. Now we are going to show you how to make XRF measurement. We already have two cups, um, the dust cup and the soil XRF cup. And the, remember when you store the samples, always have the, um, the transparent part up because this is the site that XRF instrument is going to measure and uh, um, any damage of the surface will cause um, measurement errors. And uh, here's our XRF instrument. And uh, after opening the instrument, um, we go to mode. And uh, we choose bulk analysis. And there is a mode called standard soil mode. And that's the mode we are going to use to measure soil and dust samples. And now we go directly to data entry. Here it requires us to input a sample name, so we click on the keyboard. And now I'll just call this sample soil. And then um, click return. There's another piece come with XRF instrument. It looks like this. And there, I'll put this piece in the front of um, the XRF gun. And there, here's where this hole is where XRF gun is going to come out. And there, um, make sure it aligns with the hole in this piece as well. Right now we are going to align the hole on the XRF 
with the surface of soils. And then there's an orange button. Press the button which will start the measurement and uh, uh, we want the measurement to be roughly 90 seconds. Here we go. And they're on the screen. You can see that there are already measurements in um, preliminary measurement coming as time goes on. And in the soil mode, um, it's going to give you three information elements, which is the elements XRF is measuring right now. And their, their unit PPM, the last column is the um, arrow measurement. So the first column elements and the second col column, the concentration of each element is um, the most important information that we will be able to obtain from XRF measurement. And the, um, the time measurement is here, so we are shooting for 90 seconds and it's almost there. And at about 90 seconds, what you need to do is to release the orange button. Measurement will stop automatically. The result, as we can see for this sample, which is called soil, and this is actually a clean reference soil samples with extremely low um, metal concentrations to start with. So it's not surprising that um, we didn't have high concentrations of lead or zinc or copper or cadmium or arsenic inside. Now we are going to measure um, the second sample, which is the dust sample. Hit the entry button and then return to the main menu. Here's data entry again and we click on data entry. And now we are going to change the sample name into dust. Again we click on keyboard. So we are ready for our second measurement. And again, align the hole on the XRF instrument with the at the center of your sample cup. And when you are ready, press down the orange button and the measurement will start. And again, we hold the orange button for 90 seconds. Here's our measurement result for the dust samples. And then look at the number, um, the number of dust samples seems to be lower than the number of soil samples. However, we found a um, certain amount of lead, um, 11 ppm of lead inside the dust samples. And there, now we found zinc, which is about 334 ppm of zinc in the indoor dust samples. 
Oh, there are copper as well, which is 96 ppm. And there, there's usually lots of iron. And there's not as much chromium as in the soil samples. And again, there are usually lots of calcium, potassium. There's also some sulfur. Uh, what uh, is shown below the sentence is all the elements which is below detection limit. So that's the end of our um, demonstration today. And I hope it will be helpful for you to um, in using XRF, which is a really handy um, and a helpful measurement of environment samples. Thank you.